This instrument is designed to make uh, single-stranded oligos, or DNA. Uh, RNA, DNA, LNA, it is using solid phase chemistry to do this. Solid phase chemistry basically means that you start with a solid support of some kind. In the case of this chemistry, it's polystyrene or controlled pore glass, which is typically referred to as CPG. So you have PS and CPG. Those are your solid materials that we're going to start our molecule attached to, and then we're going to grow it uh, attached to that solid material. And so solid phase chemistry is referring to that type of an operation where solid support is trapped inside of a reaction space, reaction vessel, and some filter is on either side of that material to allow liquid to pass through, but to keep the solid material trapped in between the two filters. And then, like I said, we just put the liquid through and then it goes to waste when we're finished using it as part of the reaction. DNA is made up of four bases, typically referred to as A, C, G, and T. That means cytosine, guanine, and thiamine. And we're adding those um, one at a time to grow our chain, our molecule, okay? The five prime end of each of the nucleosides has a, a chemical blocking group on it, typically referred to as DMT um, or dimethoxytriol. Mm -hmm. That blocking group prevents the five prime end from reacting with anything when we don't want it to. And when we want it to react, we have to remove that chemical blocking group. That process is called detritilation or deblocking. And that's done with an acid, usually, typically TCA, trichloroacetic acid, or DCA, dichloroacetic acid. The more exposure that your oligo has to acid, the more likely that you'll have depurination of A and G, all right? And A is the one that depurinates most easily. And that causes a problem, it causes the mutations and, and breaking in your chain, okay? So you want to eliminate that. Uh, DCA is a milder acid. Since every cycle you're exposing this thing to acid, the longer the oligos you're trying to make, the more likely you might want to use DCA instead of TCA. TCA is the, is the one that's typically used. It goes faster. Everybody wants faster, right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's kind of normal these days. Faster, yeah. time is money, fast, fast, fast. <laughs> the reason to not use DCA all the time is it takes a lot longer. So mm -hmm. you double the exposure time to the acid when you use DCA versus TCA in order to achieve the same chemical result. DCA is, is a liquid, it's kind of an oily substance. TCA is a powder, and when you dissolve it, either one in dichloromethane, you know, you remove the dichloromethane, it evaporates pretty quickly, and so once you remove the dichloromethane with DCA, you have this oily substance that creeps all over the place and gets into everything. And with TCA, you just have a powder that dried up and you kind of, you know, get rid of it. So it's, mm, okay. uh, it's, it's easier to work with from, a, uh, from an instrument and a user standpoint. Once that's removed, then our five prime end is available for adding our next nucleoside. Okay? And to do that, we're going to bring in the nucleoside of choice for the particular reaction we want, uh, for the sequence we're trying to produce, and we're going to um, mix that with activator, an activator reagent, which is typically tetrazole was the original one, but ETT, ethothiotetrazole, is commonly used these days. There's a few other ones out there that get used. The function of the activator is to protonate the three prime end of the nucleoside and to make it active so that it can react with the five prime that's available on the solid support. Universal support is a solid support with a linker only. And there's no nucleoside attached. A standard support is one with a first nucleoside already attached. So it would have an A, C, G, or T on it.
and DNA synthesis typically takes around anywhere from 45 to 60 seconds for that reaction to occur, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the D-block reaction for TCA, you typically within about 30, 35 seconds, and DCA at least a minute or more, and depending on the scale. So the larger the scale, the longer the time you need for that. So after D-block, we'll wash it to get rid of all the acid and everything, and then we bring in our nucleoside and the activator agent, allow it to react, and then the next part, this one over here, it can be swapped around depending on your, uh, you know, whose book you read and what you believe. But this is the normal way that most everybody does it, capping first and then oxidation. Capping basically is going to block off any five prime ends that have not gotten this nucleoside that we tried to add over here. Because coupling reaction is not always 100%. 99.5 is pretty good these days. That's, that's usually what people tend to get in that area, 99.9 .9 sometimes, whatever, but still it's not 100%. So to block off those that didn't get reacted, we use this capping step and it blocks them off or acidulates that, that five prime N so that it can't extend anymore within this chemistry. After capping, then we go into oxidation. Oxidation is converting the phosphor backbone from a trivalent to a pentavalent state to stabilize it. In the trivalent state that it's in initially, it will break apart in this cycle over time or certainly at the end when you do your exposure to the base to do your deep protection, it will definitely break apart there if this is not uh, stabilized. This can sometimes be replaced by a sulfurization or a phosphorylation step, depending on whether you're doing backbone modifications or not. Sometimes people want to have a second oxidized reagent on their instrument so they can selectively use one or the other depending on what they're trying to make. After this oxidation, we would typically do a wash step. So we do a wash in here between D-block and coupling, and then from here down through here, we don't typically wash. After the oxidation, we'll wash before we go back into D-block again. Once you get done with that, you don't have an oligo that's in condition that you can use for anything in, in a biological way you have to cleave or remove the oligo from the solid support. Remember we were building this on a solid material, so now it's still attached to that solid material, we have to remove it from there. It's typically called cleaving. Done with a strong base, ammonium hydroxide has traditionally been used, it's something called AMA is another derivative of that, it's a mixture of ammonium hydroxide and uh, methylamine. Straight methylamine has been used, there's, there's a number of different things that get used for this. Then from there, you have to remove the side chain protections that I was talking about before. So there are some other points in the molecule that, that have a protecting group on them, and that has to be removed also. So you have to cleave and do this the protection. Traditionally, this was done first. Concentrated ammonium hydroxide would be used to cleave the oligo and then elute the oligo from the reaction of the solid support into plate or whatever you're going to collect it in. Okay. And then from there, you would take that tube or plate and seal it and put it in an oven or a water bath to raise the temperature. Usually anywhere from about 70 to 90 degrees C. Well, it depends on what reagent you're using. Ammonium hydroxide, about two hours mm -hmm. at 80 degrees C. You can get it down to about an hour and a half if you go to 90 degrees C. And if you're at 70, it's probably three hours. Wow. Uh, so it depends. You know, there's trade-offs, right? 
If you're using something like AMA, which is a mixture of ammonium hydroxide and methylamine, you can get that down to about 30 minutes. And so typically after this, one would dry down your, the oligo because after here it'll be an ammonium hydroxide solution and you really can't do a good OD reading because it evaporates too quickly. So you dry it down, resuspend it in a quantity of water and then check the uh, OD at 260. So we got through what the, what the synthesizer can do and then we've talked about that this has to happen before your oligo can become biologically useful.